We're here today to talk about a public health problem that doesn't receive a lot of attention or press coverage, but it's a serious health problem that's affecting millions of people every year. I'm talking about injuries from falls, and the statistics are sobering. Among those age 65 and older, falls are the leading cause of injury death. In 2007, over 18,000 older adults died from falls. Falls are the most common cause of hospital admissions for trauma. In the year 2000 alone, direct medical costs of falls totaled a little over $19 billion. Our guest today is David Farnball, an attorney with the Sweeney Law Firm who has over 25 years experience in handling cases involving falls. David, thanks so much for being with us today. It's great to be here today. David, can you give us some examples of cases where a homeowner or a business owner might be legally responsible if someone falls and is injured on their property? Yeah, I can give you a couple examples that I think are fairly common. Uh, the first example that I would give you is uh, a fall on a premises involving uh, snow or ice on a sidewalk. Uh, in Indiana, a premises owner, let's say an owner of a store or a shopping mall, they have a duty to exercise reasonable care to keep, uh, for example, the sidewalks in a reasonably safe condition. So if there's snow and ice that accumulates on a sidewalk and the business owner doesn't take any measures like shoveling the snow off or spreading some salt and someone falls on an icy sidewalk, there's potentially legal liability. There seems to be a lot of misconceptions on who's responsible if someone falls. I've run into people who believe that at a business, a business is always liable if someone falls in their property. I've run into people who believe the person that fell is responsible because they weren't being as careful as they should have been. Can you t explain to us how the law works when it comes to people falling on someone else's property? I think there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, legal liabilities stemming from a fall. Oftentimes people will come into our office after a fall and they mistakenly believe that if they fall on a business premises that the business is automatically legally responsible for their injuries and that's simply not the case. Uh, a business owner has a duty to exercise reasonable care and what's reasonable depends on the situation. Um, so uh, it just depends on what type of a fall it was and what the business owner did to, to cause the fall or prevent the fall that will determine whether there's liability. The other thing that's important to remember about a fall case is a person who is walking on a sidewalk or on a premises, they have a duty to exercise reasonable care for their own safety. So if there are hazardous conditions or things that they should have observed uh, to try to watch out for their own safety, uh, they have a duty to exercise care for their own safety. Now, if one of our viewers has fallen or has a loved one that's been seriously injured in a fall and they believe that it's the fault of the property owner, what advice would you give them? Well, one of the biggest problems in fall cases in general is uh, the absence of documentation or photographs right after a fall. Uh, one of the most important things, I think, after a fall is to have uh, a family member or a close friend go to the scene of where the fall occurred and obtain photographs of the scene right after the accident. It's very important to try to document or preserve uh, what the scene looked like immediately after a fall. So that's the first step. I think the second bit of advice I would give to somebody who's been involved in a fall is oftentimes you'll be contacted by an investigator and a gesture uh, for the owner of the premises. And I would recommend that you refrain from giving any sort of a recorded statement until you've had an opportunity to talk to a lawyer and get some legal advice. And the other thing that I would say is that if you've suffered a serious fall and you think that there was something uh, that uh, shouldn't have been there or it was negligence on the part of the property owner that caused the fall, I think it's important to contact an attorney early after the fall and get legal advice. Our viewers may be concerned about the cost involved in this kind of case. Does it cost a lot of money to investigate a fall or to file a lawsuit against a business owner? Most law firms that handle these cases handle them on a contingent fee basis, which means they'll charge the client a percentage of the recovery and they will advance the expenses of these cases, so it really doesn't cost the consumer anything to investigate a slip and fall case on a premises.
David, this has been very informative and you've given our viewers a lot of information about the legal aspects of a fall injury. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. It was a pleasure to be here today.